On the Ground, presented by The Cube. Here's your host, Jeff Frick. Hi, Jeff Frick here with The Cube. We're on the ground in downtown San Francisco at the Blockchain Conference San Francisco at the NASDAQ Entrepreneurial Center, and we're really excited for our next guest, Joy Shen, Director of Emerging Technology and Partnerships and Investments for Thomson Reuters. Welcome. It's good to be here. Thanks, yeah. Jeff. So you led a panel with all the biggest names in the room. You had um, Intel up there, IBM, Microsoft, uh, unfortunately wasn't able to make it, yeah. travel, weather, whatever. So pretty interesting. Those are big names at a very little conference. I think IBM's actually one of the sponsors. What does that signal to you as you keep an eye on emerging technology? I think it just signals that the larger companies learned uh, that they have to keep pace with the external emerging tech innovation and that they could play a key role in building out the technology infrastructure that is still fairly nascent today, especially in blockchain. So there is ground to be gained and opportunities to be had. And um, a lot of these companies like Intel and IBM and, and Microsoft um, have enough technical expertise as well as the resources to be able to um, accelerate the efforts. It looks like in kind of a typical Intel fashion too, that they're you know, kind of jumping into the depths of the infrastructure. And, and I think John from IBM talked about, you know, there's the application, there's the platform, and then there's the fabric and really trying to get into open sourcing the fabric to really enable the technology to grow much faster. Yeah, I think you know, you, you, if you look at kind of the, how the ecosystem is playing out, right? You have the startups kind of focusing on the application side um, and the user side. And, um, and, and the large tech companies, you know, Intel and IBM talk about the fabric. You start at the networking and then you go into security and you have the business logic is very much aligned with how the large enterprise tech companies talk to their large clients, right? They, they view the stack from um, embedded level where Intel is at uh, to drive efficiency and scale and then all the way to building out that uh, infrastructure to the application side where you have the rigorous and scalable business logic um, where I think you know a lot of these large tech companies are trying to play a bet that they are going to be the leader in that eventually. So we cover a ton of tech conferences. It wasn't that long ago that Hadoop was an unknown entity. Nobody really knew what the funny uh, elephant was and you know now there's a lot going on in Spark on the big data side. Um, from your point of view, looking at across a lot of technologies, what, where is a blockchain now relative to some of these other ones? It was still really early days. You think it's really going to start to run? And what should we start looking for as indications of kind of mainstream adoption? It's very early, um, I think. Um, but the difference this time is, you know, if you think about kind of cloud, right? Cloud uh, or big data, um, y you, you start it with kind of the technology companies um, leading the chart to articulate what is the technology value, what's the business value, um, educating the financial services firms or the other industries, the business adopters. This time is different. The business adopters, the financial services firms, the governments, the uh, insurance companies, or now the advertising, they're all looking at it themselves. Um, so um, technology-wise, it's still very nascent. I think once you uh, see, in my mind, uh, more of a for example, like R3 or other concerns where they actually articulate what is one use case that has been scaled, right, across multiple um, stakeholders um, and be able to articulate use case and how it's going to make money or provide much better service that can be uh, adopted um, either by their business clients or, or end users. I think that's where you're going to see, uh, see that. I think the other signal is, for example, the Linux Foundation, the Hyperledger. Um, I mean, you, you mentioned Hadoop, right? You see um, you know, Hadoop, you see Spark. It's kind of um, following the same pattern. So once you see kind of that accelerated uh, adoption curve where the developers are really getting onto, for example, like Hep uh, Hyperledger, um, then you will see more contribution, more commits, and, and build more scalable um, applications on top of it. Right now, it's kind of everybody trying to kind of race to the top, right? right. But it's interesting because you have, you have the, the open source, as you meant, the Linux, which is the Hyperledger project, uh, which John from IBM talked about really trying to get into the, into the infrastructure. And then you've got the R3 consortium. So you have both consortium and open source projects, both kind of driving innovation, drove, both kind of driving standards at the, at the bottom layer to really enable more uh, applications on top. Yeah. I mean, I think that's healthy, right? And that's balanced. That's, that's in contrast to... Uh, 
some of the other technology we've seen where it was purely driven bottoms up from the technology company going to their clients and say, here is kind of the technology solution we're offering and here are the use cases that we think uh, could uh, be credible and uh, value add to you. This is kind of both bottoms up and top down in some ways, right? Where, you know, horizontal, you kind of think from the industry push, where R3 is a closed uh, consortium with 40 plus banks. Um, they set up their own private environment um, to really trying to collaborate to see what is the true potential of some of these use cases by actually doing it. Right. And then they also invite technology companies that come in and uh, really see um, the business uh, applications very early on or kind of the business discussions very early on that. And then you have um, the Linux Foundation really pushing uh, much more rigorous standards around technology platforms. So it's, it's actually very healthy and balanced. And I think this is something that you, we didn't see um, with mobile cloud and some other things where it's kind of the technology companies talking about mobile first, right? Cloud first, and then you know the banks and, and other uh, organizations in the industry start to realize you know we have to get on it. Right, and and even the finance companies really trying to disintermediate their own inefficiencies by starting to take a deeper dive at blockchain and whether they should implement it or not for some of these particular types of transactions or applications that might be a better solution. Yeah, um, and you know there are a lot of articles written now at the World Economic Forum. Right, they were, the one key topic is the next uh, industrial revolution um, propelled by technology. So I think it, you know it, it's an indication of um, the the banks and the other industries are realizing that the business models will change whether or not you're like in the next five to ten years. And by observing. Some of the things, for example, um, you know, Uber is doing Airbnb, that they are disrupting the other industries. It's coming because the technology advance is there, right? You have a more much mature API economy, you have a developer ecosystem, you have more robust DevOps kind of systems that allow um, applications to be built much faster. Um, so you kind of see that demarcation on the blockchain side forming as well, where you have startups focus on applications, you have companies focus on blockchain as a service, and then you have the infrastructure player. So the stack is becoming more and more clear. And you know, any company, I think compared to last year, you see more early stage companies now um, realizing that they have to know where they're playing in that stack right. um, versus saying, you know, I'm building a block, blockchain solution. Right. right. And, and what's the role of Bitcoin? Did, was, was Bitcoin a necessary uh, application to get this whole thing underway? Does Bitcoin begin to fade in the distance or does Bitcoin just become one of many applications that are leveraging the underlying blockchain technology? I think uh, one of the panels uh, kind of comment, I think Bitcoin, Bitcoin is an application on top of the Bitcoin blockchain. Um, so it's a manifestation of one application could be built on top of blockchain, right? Bitcoin is a kind of a transfer of asset, transfer of value. Um, you can extend that uh, to other applications. So it is important um, in the sense that it helped really to allow people to see the potential power and the potential of blockchain. Um, and um, some of the learnings from the Bitcoin community and how Bitcoin as application is facilitating the transfer value could be extended to some of the other newer thinkings. Right. So biggest surprise from the day that you saw today, either on your panel or one of the other presentations? I think it's, um, I mean, there are a lot of attendees from uh, Asia, um, and you actually see a startup from China pitching. Um, I think it's uh, kind of continued interest now, not necessarily just in the US or in London, where you see the financial centers um, and the activities are, but um, the idea of how blockchain could be uh, an interesting, relevant technology uh, for different industries, for governments to solve problems, now extending beyond uh, some of the first markets that are picking this up, right? Again, US and Europe now extending to um, you know, Singapore, into China, and, and other areas. Awesome, so last question, what other kind of cool emerging things are you keeping an eye on? Because uh, you sit in a, in a great seat, you <laughs> gotta keep an eye on all kinds of things. Um, you know, not necessarily anything that's kind of Tr truly new, but um, you know a lot of the areas where it's um, you know advertising technology, uh, you know mobile as well as cloud, um, whether it's container technology, or others, you kind of see that 
um, next wave of new, uh, new innovation that's coming that will further optimize uh, some of the existing solutions out there. So uh, we're closely watching all those areas you know, in addition to um, you know, blockchain, which is, of course, much more nascent. So. All right. Well, we'll keep an eye on you, and uh, <laughs> we'll see what you're keeping an eye on. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jeff. It's uh, good to be here. Absolutely. Thanks for stopping by. I'm Jeff Frick. We are downtown San Francisco at the Blockchain Conference San Francisco at the NASDAQ Entrepreneurial Center. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.